Christ Palace International Ministries. In the course of the week, I, I, I was just meditating on the word and I wanted to do a test, which is very simple. I called my boys and I tickled them physically and they were laughing. And when they had finished laughing, I went and said, I'm coming to tickle you. Hey, I didn't touch them, they started laughing again. The first instant, I gave them the stimulus, which is understandable. But the second time, I said, I'm going to tickle you, but their mind remembered the tickle and it produced the effect. What if, what if, what if? This is your mind. It has two components, the conscious and the subconscious. The subconscious is what the Bible calls the heart. Do you know the powerful thing about the subconscious is that it does not know what is true or a lie. If I tell my subconscious I'm rich, the subconscious says, yes, we are rich. If you tell your subconscious you are a devil, yes, we are devils. You tell your subconscious, I am happy. Yes, we are. Whatever you tell it agrees with you. And he does not know whether it's true or false. Right now, I can put an image ahead of you, which is a scary image. It can produce adrenaline for you. And there's nothing to fear. And I can actually put a lion there that wants to produce adrenaline. I repeat. When you see a lion, you, your body will produce a hormone. Two of us. Two of us. So there's an actual lion. You got actually afraid. The mind does not know whether it's actual or not. But I can draw a lion. Pretend that the lion is actual. And you see the lion. Jesus! The same adrenaline will be produced. What if what you want to be, you fake it on the outside? Your subconscious will think that you are it. And one of these days you manifest it. But the problem is, somebody said, Pastor, if that is simple, I'm going to try. They will do it this evening. And the next time they will remember it's next year. When I preach again. That's the problem. This guy is sitting here. If the day they take him outside, he will get angry with the ushers. This guy. Yes. He will get angry. Do you know what? It's the mind. The mind. The mind is comfortable. The mind is comfortable. The moment there's a change, ah, it's not my star. No, if it's your star and it's working, keep it. But if it's not working, change your mind. They told you a story. Your mouth is doing, I want to say, I want to say. Anytime they tell you so, you say. So they told you this time, I won't say. Ah, your mind is not normal. We, we say things. Me, my mouth, we say things. How come you hear this one, you won't say? I won't say. I won't say. Hey, you pick up your phone. Today I won't say. Mm, you say no, no. I, I, I'll say it, but I won't tell the whole story. So then the man said, "Of course, yes, we will say things. You must say something. Listen to me, but you can decide that this is what I do. It's not good. I'm going to start. When you start, you go back to it every now and then. But if you can persist, it will change. Clap for Jesus." They did another test with dogs. Wow. Anytime the animals got here, their food was here. But when they got here, they shocked them. They shocked them with the electricity. So the animals got here, their food was there. They would shock them. So they would go back. This is any, any form of animal, you can try it. They would shock them, so the animals would go back. Then what they did was that they removed the shock. The animals got there. The food was there. They were hungry. But because their mind said, if you get here, you are shocked. They got there and they turned back and the food was there. Many times you started the business. Anytime you start the business, you, got, you get to your point, you lose. So this time you are about to lose thinking that the value is the same. What happened yesterday is going to happen. But if you can tell yourself that no, it's different. I've upgraded my mind. You can change that subconscious by the conscious. Right now, I'm talking to you, the power of the mind. When you go home, it's likely that you, you will say the power of the mind. If you never hear about the mind, it's likely that you won't say about the mind. What don't you put in your conscious mind? What you want to change? It's called the power of repetition. As you program it, very soon, you'll be attuned to it. You'll be comfortable. Having to realize that some people don't like to stand in front of people. Right now, if I call some people, they will just vomit, they will, they will collapse. They will say, uh, but the first time you do it, you shake. If you do it again, okay. Third time again. Very soon, if they even call you, get, they don't call you, get angry. Because you have become so comfortable. If this place was glory, you have become comfortable to glory. If this place is pain, you are comfortable to pain. 
you can change your location by your mind. You can cross borders. They won't ask you for your passport in your mind. And your mind will not know that you cross the border. Your, your mind will actually think that you are in Dubai. And yet you are not in Dubai. Your body is in America, but your mind is in Dubai. You live in Dubai. You do everything in Dubai. And your mind does not know that you don't live it because your mind will reject or accept anything you give it to it. What if you gave it only the good things? Ooh, said my mind is renewed. If this is true, can I choose my thought? Yes, the Bible says so. Choose your thought. Decide to mind the right thing. Romans 8 verse 5. Catch yourself saying the wrong thing and change it. Catch yourself. No, no, no. This is not me. I don't talk that way again. Change. Catch yourself changing. Some people are not part of their lives. <laughs> no, they are not engaged in their lives. They are living. But their lives are programmed by what their mom told them. Their father told them. Their school told them. Environment told them. They have never been involved in themselves. From today, be involved in your life. Be involved. It's not by force to go where you don't have to go. It's not by force to eat what you don't have to eat. It's not by force. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the... You can choose what you mind. Have you been to a place, somebody's home and said, you, I won't mind you. Oh, hello? Somebody's home, I won't mind you. Can you be your wife? Or your husband? I won't mind you. But there are days you can decide that, me, I will mind you today. In the same way, you can decide to mind progress or mind retrogression. Those who mind the things of the flesh, they live after the flesh. The things you mind, you go in that direction. So he said, finally, Philippians 4 verse 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. He said, he's telling you, choose what you think about. I want to ask you, when you were planning to kill somebody, say, hey, that I don't kill somebody. The Bible says, the one who will lie and gospel is a murderer. The Bible says, you have to use this to measure your mind. Look, oh, look at that. So keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is what? Authentic. You like fake things too much. <laughs> Authentic and real. Honorable and admirable. Beautiful and respectful. Pure and holy. Merciful and kind. And fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God. You can decide to fix your thoughts on the glorious things of God. Pastor, I've gone through a lot. I've suffered a lot. You suffered 10 years ago. And we are in 2022. Your mind is fixed on the suffering of 10 years ago. Pastor, if I tell you what I went through when I went to Afghanistan, you will not believe it. It's called post-traumatic syndrome. Pastor, I suffered in that marriage. Oh, I'm not denying that you suffered. It's true you suffered. But can you focus on it or change to look forward? That church, the way I suffered, 10 years now, you are still painful. You are better with the pastor. You are fixing on your mind. It's a prophecy that tomorrow another pastor will hurt you again. And it's not the pastor, it's your mind. Because what you are fixed on will manifest. Pastor, pastor, you say it's my fault. I didn't say it's your fault. I'm saying the Bible said, choose your thoughts. Mind what you decide to. The same with that, I won't mind you. Choose what you mind in this life. I won't mind you. I won't mind you. The truth of the matter is that miracles follow your thought. True. If you think miracle thoughts, miracles will happen. If you think word-based thoughts, it will change your life. No wonder the devil comes after the word of God. Because if the word can stay in you and think about the word, it will change your life. So the Bible said the sower went to sow a seed and the enemy came to take the word. Why? Why would we come for the word? If the word stays in you, it will change your mind, your life will change. So if you go for the word, your mind stays the same, nothing changes. I'm sure you know about the prodigal son. It was his mind which took him out of the house. His mind brought him back. His mind took him out of abundance. The guy used to live in abundance. One day his mind said, let's go out want to enjoy life. The mind took him out. He went to feed pigs and eat pigs food. One day he said that, ah, I think I can go back to my father's house. Some of you, wherever you are, you can think your way out. Think your way in. Luke 15 verse 17. Oh, 
And when he came to himself, he said, How many high servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare? And I perished with hunger. Can I get NLT? When he finally came to where his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the high servants have food enough to spare. And here I'm dying of hunger. He was thinking. He was thinking. If only we can think, there will be a right answer. Can I get that in the Passion Bible? Humiliated. The son finally realized what he was doing and he, oh, shout and he, what you are doing? Realize it and start thinking. Realize what is happening and start thinking that what I'm doing is good, I'll continue. What I'm doing is not good, I'll change and God will give you the power. He realized what he was doing and he thought, ah, I'm better than this. There are many workers at my father's house who have all the food they want with plenty to spare. They lack nothing. Why am I here dying of hunger? Some of you, you might be dying of hunger. Some of you, you might be feeding pigs. Some of you, you're okay. But either way, you can choose a new thought and change your life starting from today. Do you know the woman with the issue of blood, he got his miracle from his mind. The woman has suffered and Jesus was in town all this while. So the thought came to her. Ha! Ah, if only I can touch the hem of his garment, my life will change. The woman got a miracle by a thought. One thought. One thought. Matthew 9, verse 21. And, and NLT. Pastor, you make it seem easy. I didn't say so. It's your mind telling you it's easy. I didn't say that. I'm only telling you the word of God. Matthew 9, 21. For she thought. She did what? She engaged the mind. If I can touch his robe, I will be healed. The angels come around. No. She thought. I can increase my income. I can change my peace level. I can be happy again. Pastor, you are ignoring that I suffered when I was growing up. No. I've not ignored. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you have accepted that you suffered. And you are willing not to do anything about it. And if you can decide to renovate your mind. Mm -hmm. Have you seen those who, the real estate guys? But you know what? They buy old property and they flip it around. That such, such is your mind. In the old house they buy, there might be cockroaches there. It will be ugly. The paintings are bad. The experience is bad. But they can break it down and build a new one. You can break the old mentality and bring one down. There was one guy, he was a bad manager and Jesus clapped for the bad manager. The Bible calls him the shrewd manager. He was very bad. Jesus praised the guy. Why? The guy knew how to exercise the mind. Luke 16, let's start from verse 1. Jesus told this story to his disciples. There was a certain rich man who had a manager handling his affairs. One day, a report came that the manager was wasting his employees' money. Do managers do that? Yes. Can they do that? Yes. Do all managers do that? No. So the employer called him and said, What is this I hear about you? Get your report in order because you are going to be fired. Hey, you are going to be fired. The guy they didn't cry. He said, Please, please. Say, no, no, no. Fire me. But look at what the guy did. But the manager thought to himself. The day he was being fired, he asked a question. He was thinking, today I'm going to be fired. What will I do? He said, now what? My boss has fired me. I don't have the strength to dig ditches. And I am too proud to beg. Oh, I like it. One of my very free verses. I, oh, I like that. Go to, give me that in King James. I like to quote that in King James. Oh, I like it. He said, what shall I do? For my Lord take it away from me in the stewardship. I cannot dig. To beg to, I am ashamed. <laughs> what will I do? <laughs> you have to know what you can do and what you can do. And decide something. <laughs> I cannot dig. To beg to, I am ashamed. What will I do? Go back to energy for me. Let me close. The manager thought to himself, now what? My boss has fired me. I don't have the strength to dig ditches and I am too proud to beg. Ah, I know how to ensure that I have plenty of friends who will give me a home when I am fired. What did he do? So he invited each person who owed money to his employer to come and discuss the situation. He asked the first one, how much do you owe him? The man replied, I owe him 800 gallons of oil. So the manager told him, take the bill, change it to 400 gallons. Thanks, man. How much do you owe your employer? He asked the next man. Thousand bushels of wheat. The manager said, make it 800. Next. 
the rich man had to admire the dishonest rascal for being so wise and smart. Go back to NIV. In verse 8. The master commended the dishonest manager because he acted smart. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than the people of the light. Why Jesus was saying that the people of the world, they use their mind. The people of the light, the Christians, some way, somebody told them not to use their mind, so they don't use their mind. The guys write the Bible. Oh, the way you are looking at me, you are, you are, you are judging me. Let me be on your feet. Who said if you get born again, you don't have to think? Who said so? Who said so? No, no one says so. The situation is killing you. And you are saying, God will do it. God will do it. <laughs> he said, what will I do? You must have thinking sessions. You must, I know you, you like prayer. Hopefully you do pray. Hopefully you listen to some, but you must get a seat, a chair, and have thinking sessions. It is spiritual, because what you think God can do for you. Give me Ephesians 3.20. It's not only what you say God does, what you think to God will do. Ephesians 3.20. Now, unto him, that is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all that we ask all we ask all. When was the last time you had one hour thinking session? With your tablet or with your phone? But you, the way your WhatsApp messages are coming, it will not help you to think. You are thinking. <laughs> Put that phone away. Close the door. Turn off the light, if possible. Get the paper by yourself and think. I'm here. I want to get to the back. What do I do? pass here or I can pass here or I can pass here or I can jump over these people what do I do this one will kill me faster I can tell everyone to close their eyes and vanish <laughs> think you might be thinking what about the devils what about God has done something about the devil he gave you his mind he gave you his spirit and he said that Christ has become unto you power and wisdom so he gave you what to do about the devil and now that you have used it change your life at times you know what to do but your mind says that what will people say some people their problem has been what will people say and because of what people say I want to come down but if they come down they will think pastor wants to preach again ah, they, what if you close your eyes to what people say you can make some progress your mind is powerful and Paul the apostle said be ye transformed be changed by the renewing not of your car or your dress but of your mind you can get a pig wash the pig put a suit on the pig you change the environment of the pig but what will happen is that if the mind does not change it's only a matter of time the pig will go back to the man but if the mind of the pig is changed you put him in the mind so the greatest thing we have to give attention to is the mind. And the word used for renewing is a renovation of the mind. We must adjust. And in renovation, you break down systems and you bring forth new ones. So be you transformed by the renewal of your mind. And the Bible said in Proverbs 4 verse 23, all the issues of life, they don't come from heaven or from the devil. They come from the heart of man. Christ Palace International Ministries.